we received Megan's diagnosis probably about nine months of age. They told us it was a very serious disease and told us it was a fatal disease. And we got the call a couple of days afterwards that Patrick, who is only seven days old, also had Pompe disease. So within the span of those first couple of months, we learned we had two kids who probably wouldn't live to be two. Pompe is a rare genetic disease. The kids, because of their genetic defect, they can't break down sugar. If you were diagnosed with Pompe disease, absent a treatment, you will die from your disease. Megan got profoundly sick. She had to go on a ventilator. She was in the hospital for six weeks. Her heart stopped three times in those six weeks. But she's a tough little kid. I remember looking at Megan and, and into those big brown eyes of hers, and she was scanning the room, and she kind of locked on to, to me, and then she locked on to Eileen. And, uh, you know, I think those little eyes, you know, they, they told us a lot. And I think they told us that she didn't want to quit, that she wanted to fight. And I think from that moment on, we both knew she wanted to fight so we would too. We grew increasingly frustrated with the pace of research, with always seeming like we were out of the loop, and eventually, out of desperation, Eileen and I decided that we'd try to help take the lead in the, the quest for a treatment or cure. And I went in the next day and told my boss that I'm gonna step away from a secure job, and you know the, the pay and the stability for us, the health insurance, all of that, and take a chance on starting a business. I had a lot of confidence in John, and I knew that if he was comfortable and had done the research and had done the homework and knew he could do this, I just needed to give him my full support. I had very, very limited experience uh, in the medical world, and there were tough times. There were times where we were frustrated, times where the kids were so very sick, and times we just wanted to let nature take its course. But eventually, we saw some very positive signs, and that was just so amazingly exciting. Then, of course, you start to think, OK, how can I quickly get Megan and Patrick on it? Because I was an executive of the company developing the drug, hospital review boards were not comfortable with my kids being in a clinical study. So I made it easy for them. I quit my job. I remember the day the kids were first infused. I got to press the infusion button to start Megan's infusion. Eileen got to press Patrick's. We hadn't seen her smile in, in two years. After the first couple of months, we started to notice that she was smiling again. So that was the first sign to me that there's some hope. And then we went for the 12 week review. And I remember telling Megan, this means, Megan, that your heart's getting better. And it means you're gonna live to be an old, an old lady. And then um, she looked at me and kind of gave me a thumbs up and just threw her arm around me and, and said, thank you. So that's the house on the left, Megan, right there. That green one with the tents around it. Hey, guys, what's up? We just want to introduce up, our real Megan and Patrick and John Jr. that are here today. John is a remarkable person. It's the power of his love for his kids to overcome extraordinary, difficult circumstances. John's the kind of guy who said no, no is not acceptable. I'm going to find a way to turn no into a maybe and then maybe into yes. People always say, how do you do it? I'm like, how do you do it? How do you not? I think most people in this position would do what they could to make their kids happy. I think I did my job. As a dad, I did what I had to do. And I don't think that makes you a hero.